Welcome to another week, another show of Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. There's our buddy, Owen Sebring. Finally, after Jet Beecham left about a year ago, and we've had Mitch Thick on, uh, Owen's running mate from Fox 28, CBS 2, Iowa's News Now. It is long overdue, but my friend, we talk off the air, so I want to bring it on the air. Welcome to the program. Great to see you, and how's everything going with you? Fabulous. Uh, we're in the biz- one of the busiest times of the year. Football season is usually our busiest, but with Caitlin Clark and the amount of fervor there is around Hawkeye women's basketball right now, this this March has turned into one of our busiest seasons that we've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, later on in the program, folks, after we do the first two segments with Owen Sebrin here, again, you see all of Owen's information at the bottom of the screen along with mine. Please check out those links from that fantastic Eye on the Hawks podcast he does with Mitch Thick and others, but also some of the extra features, uh, the Caitlin Clark effect and some of the pregame shows and extended coverage that uh, Mitch will just toss it to Owen like he did on Monday night and just went post game during the the nine o'clock Fox News and then the 10 o'clock CBS News. So uh, just wonderful stuff. So be sure to check out all the links, but we're going to have John Steffi join us to close out the show talking Hawkeye football. But for Owen, this first segment, we're going to talk with him about Bluter's Bunch. And then the second segment will be with Hawkeye men's basketball. So Owen, no time like the present. Uh, we record this on Wednesday afternoon, March 27th. And as you're getting ready to leave tomorrow, when the team does, and as well as my production partner, Michael Merrick, you're heading out east. Albany, New York is your destination. Let's talk about Monday night a little bit. But without Sid Falter and Gabby Marshall, oh, and this stuff doesn't happen. Yeah, I don't know how that game turns out because that shot that Gabby blocked, the game was tied at that point. That was a shot to take the lead. Iowa could have very well gone down by three at that point. So who knows how the hands of fate might have turned if it weren't for Gabby's block there. Sydney taking it herself. I mean, she said post game that she's like, I know I'm a good driver. That's one of her specialties. And so she got up the court and didn't really see Caitlin over there, kind of isolated over on the wing. And so she just said, heck, I can take this myself. She drove to the hoop and the rest is history. I mean, just one of the more impressive fired up plays I think I've ever seen. I mean, Sydney, <laughs> Sydney's full of fire, but in in that moment boy she just let out a yell that uh i couldn't hear because of the amount of noise in that arena but i'm sure everybody on the bench got an earful but you touched on something else i wanted to touch upon sometimes we make a big deal maybe it's overblown about oh man you know the noise at carver but i gotta tell you oh and that's as loud as i've ever heard that place and by that i mean sustained loudness that wasn't just spurts of it and especially as you mentioned with that huge play tie game block shot by gabby and then it continues on with uh, Sydney doing what she just did, as you mentioned, that was sustained loudness I had never heard at Carver Hawkeye Arena. I'll be blunt with you, Owen. Yeah, got to be up there. I mean, for me, the bar had been set just a couple weeks ago when they had their regular season finale against Ohio State, where it just seemed like at, that was not really a close game at any point. I mean, it seems like Iowa just was in total control right from the start of that game. But every single basket that was made that day, whether it was Caitlin with a deep three-pointer, whether it was Gabby three-pointer, whether it was Hannah getting an and one, the the roof just about lifted off of that building with every single bu- bucket they made against the Buckeyes. And then that seemed to be matched just from even before the game started when they were playing West Virginia. I, I turned to some of my colleagues on my left and right and said, just in the opening lineups, I, I can't hear who they're introducing from Iowa in the opening yeah. lineups because this building is so loud. And and to to your point, like you say, it wasn't necessarily just, you know, they make a bucket and then it's loud and then it's quiet, but just start to finish. That place was raucous. And, and as the players even said before the game, they knew that that was going to be their key. I, I don't know if that game swings in Iowa's favor if they don't have such a huge home court advantage. I mean, credit West Virginia for sticking in that game as long as they did in front of a crowd that was so fired up against them. But Iowa just managed to find a way at the end, and they credited the fans with being a big part of that. Yeah, you know, and to your point, Coach Kellogg from West Virginia and his team, they talked about closeness and them against 15,000, that small group, their traveling party of 130 or a little over 100. But he was right in one thing when he said they're going to send Caitlin Clark packing. Uh, they sent her packing along with you and the rest of the media pool and the Bluters bunches you're smiling with me. You're headed to Albany, so let's talk about that. And this is history repeating itself from last year's Seattle Sweet 16 where the Hawks beat Colorado, and it was a struggle. Owen, for the most part, minus Monica Sinano and uh, McKenna Warnock for the Hawkeyes for Bluters Bunch, it's relatively the same lineup, same coaches for both teams going into this game. 
Yeah. And and it's okay to look ahead at things with me. Uh, with the media, we can talk about looking ahead. <laughs> when I'm talking to Lisa Bluter, Caitlin Clark, I try to really be focused on what's ahead because I know they don't want to look ahead. But when it says in the media, we can look ahead as far as we want. We can look at championship, whatever we want. Um, you bet. Yeah, I, I think that the thing I'm telling Hawkeye fans right now the most is that don't panic too much about the performance against West Virginia because it's almost a carbon copy of what we saw last year against Georgia people might forget that how close that Georgia game was in the second round last year, the Bulldogs had them on the ropes down to the final two, one minute, even, I mean, that was a one position game with less than one minute left. I mean, that was not out. The Hawkeyes were not out of the woods until about the final 15 seconds of that game against Georgia. And then they got it together. They went and cleaned up against Colorado, then Louisville, and then made it to the final four. And so don't let that West Virginia game worry yourself too much because you just never know what is ahead. And this Colorado game could be a get right game for them. Well, and to your point, Owen, oh, the year before that, and when I had Caitlin Clark on this show and Monica Sonano and Lisa Bluter separately the year after last December, uh, talking about losing to Creighton too. That second round game at home, and Caitlin referenced it to you and the rest of the reporting full post game. That's not the easy, oh, hey, it's another home game. It's not the opening round game. We saw that with Creighton two years ago. We saw it with, with uh, as you mentioned, Georgia last year, and now West Virginia the other night. So moving onward and upward, like you said, it's on to Albany. So I agree with you. Let's not hang so much uh, credence on one game. But moving forward, there are some things I want to make sure that you know, Hannah Stolke played a little, uh, didn't play much on the first opening round, obviously against Holy Cross because she had some migraines or some headaches. Got past that, and boy, she really got knocked around the other night. And well, everybody did. Caitlin did, as you're yeah. smiling with me. You were courtside. That was truly one of the more physical, and I don't want to, it doesn't matter what brand of basketball it is. That was physical. I don't care, men's, women's, pro, college. They let them play, Ellen. Yeah, and that's something that they might face in the road ahead. If we're looking ahead past Colorado, if they face LSU again, potentially in the Elite Eight, that's exactly the same kind of battle they're going to get. If we look farther down the road and they see South Carolina in the championship game, that's exactly the same kind of battle they're going to get. So it's good for them to get tested like that in these early rounds just to know, like, hey, we can still hang with these teams that are so physical, and we can play physical right back in their face too. And potentially down the road, hopefully have a Molly Davis there to um, sub some bodies out and uh, provide some minutes off the bench. We still don't know much about whether or not she's going to return for the Sweet 16 or potentially the Elite Eight. We'd had hopes of her seeing seeing her in the second round, but she didn't even dress. So I uh, just don't know what her status is going to be. But uh, as you say, there's just a lot of familiarity between these teams from last year to this year. I looked at the box score from last year's Colorado game in the Sweet 16, and all five of Colorado's top scorers from that game are back on this year's team. And, and I believe it was Caitlin who mentioned that they have a transfer from what uh, Michigan that's going to be on that team yes. as well. So um, a lot of familiarity with each other. And um, I, I just don't know. I don't. I've been telling everybody I was more worried about the West Virginia game than the Colorado game, quite frankly. Um, that's not to say that I was not going to have their troubles. I think the Colorado is still a talented team, good enough to beat LSU early in the season. So um, they they did skid a little bit later in the season. Um, they lost a handful of games down the stretch later in the year. Otherwise, they probably would have been a little bit higher seeded than what they are. Bunch, we're going to take a quick break, come back for a second segment with you. Uh, you crush it as as a you you raise the expectation bar very high, so you better be ready for segment two when we talk about Franz guys and Hawkeye men's basketball. He's Owen Sebring. I'm Dave O'Hara. Owen, of course, with Iowa's News Now, Fox 28 and CBS 2. Great job with sports he does. Please check out the links at the bottom of the page uh, for Owen, and you'll see all the great handiwork. And if you want to get lost, I thought I was the trivia guy, and everybody always credits me on that. But this guy is the master of the pun, Owen Sebring is, and it's trivia. Get lost in some of his social media and some of his archived work. Uh, kudos, my friend, for somebody who appreciates that stuff a great deal. You could while away an afternoon, viewers, pretty quickly if you just take a look at some of Owen's stuff. So continued great work on that, Owen. Thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate it. Truly my pleasure. For Owen Steebing, I'm Dave O'Hara. We'll be back with more Hawkeye and Owen for one more segment. And then John Steffi to close out the show talking Hawkeye football. We'll be back with more in just a few moments. To have a strong finish, you need an excellent start. It's true on the track and also in the field. That's why Mershman Seeds works tirelessly to deliver cutting edge technology year after year. Introducing Starting Line, Mershman Seeds' latest advancement in seed treatment, now providing added protection from white mold and sudden death syndrome all season. Ask for Starting Line Seed Treatment from Mershman Seeds, your friend in the field. 
Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, and Owen Sebring, Fox 28, CBS 2, Iowa's News Now sports guy. Great work he does. Check out all of Owen's links at the bottom of the screen, along with mine throughout this program and these segments. Uh, Owen, we're both kind of smiling coming back from break because initially I said Owen Freeman. And man, if I'm going to confuse you with anybody, why not Owen Freeman, the freshman of the year in the Big Ten? But now we got to get a little bit more serious because the transfer portal giveth, as we know, Owen, and it taketh away. And in this case, uh, again, as we record this on Wednesday afternoon, March 27th, yesterday, Tony Perkins announces he is entering the transfer portal from Iowa. We knew DeSante Bowen last week was entering the transfer portal. Not a huge shock. DeSante's had some injury issues, lack of playing time. His grandmother passed away. He's an East Coast guy. Uh, so not shocked about that. But then also Patrick McCaffrey made it official, and he's entering the transfer portal. Again, not a huge shock for a lot of us around the, the Hawkeye Athletics. Uh, but he is entering the transfer portal for a fifth and or an extended, I guess, COVID or senior year. Let's talk about those three departures and where it leaves the Hawkeyes in the guard court, but also throughout the team, Owen. Yeah, well, first, I do want to say that it's nice having another Owen in state. Um, That's right. <laughs> I was growing up, I was about the only, only Owen that I knew. So having an Owen Freeman there, boy, I feel like just a kindred spear with him, only about six inches shorter than <laughs> than what he is. But right. it has been, boy, it has been tough. Uh, the transfer portal has hit Iowa hard so far. Not as hard as my alma mater, the UNI Panthers. They've had, I think, six guys enter the portal right now. And so that could lead to maybe some additions to the Hawkeyes. A guy like Nate Heisey, who's leaving UNI, he was uh, a third-team All-MVC member this last season. A guy that maybe some Hawkeye fans uh, have said that maybe he'd be a good addition to the Hawkeye lineup as well. Um, maybe some of those guys from Drake that are in the portal right now after Coach DeVries left – um, they've hit the portal and maybe some additions to the Hawkeyes too. But um, either way, I, I do always like to say to people that when somebody's in the portal, it doesn't 100% mean they're going to leave. I, I guess I don't know where I stand on whether or not I see any th of those three Hawkeyes returning to the team. But um, at this point, I'm always a little bit surprised when I see somebody who enters the portal. That's usually a pretty good indication that they're going to be gone. And boy, that that leaves some big shoes to fill, especially with Tony Perkins. I think he's going to be the biggest of those three that's going to be tough just because he provides such such leadership. He's such a good uh, captain mentality around that team, provides such a spark. He's just got such energy out there. And I think he's got a good chance to even play professionally overseas somewhere. He's not an NBA guy, but I do think that he has uh, some good professional potential to continue his career um, abroad somewhere, maybe even in the, in the G League too. But um, that's just going to be such a tremendous loss and a hard, hard guy to fill on that team. And and same goes for Patrick too. I mean, I just love covering Patrick McCaffrey just as such a kind and genuine kid, like just easy to talk to, good with conversation. And um, he too is just going to be missed around that locker room. Yeah, we had him on the show a couple of years ago and he told his story when he doesn't make that very public. And I agree with you 100%. But Owen, let's you and I get a little bit more finer point then. So where, where does it leave us now? Again, we've got Peyton Sanford, Price Sanford, Brock Harding can handle some of that guard court. Inside, we mentioned the aforementioned Owen Freeman. Uh, you're going to have to replace the guy like Ben Cricky, who's out of eligibility, uh, the transfer in from Valpo this year. So when you take a look, and, and great recruiting class coming in, a legacy pick in Cooper Koch, uh, AJ Koch, uh, J.R. Koch's son. So it's going to be interesting to see, again, are we going to have to have a freshman class that really steps it up the way Harding and especially Freeman did this year, Owen? Yeah, that's probably going to have to be the case, or they really attack the transfer portal hard and maybe get a guy like, I mean, Ben Cricky, I didn't know what to expect out of him coming from the Valley, but he really was, he had his off nights and some moments where he wasn't superb, but he had some nights where he really looked great. He was outstanding, just uh, pulling down rebounds and getting points for the Hawkeyes, just almost consistently could count on him for double figures. And so I, I think I could see them maybe making an addition like that, where they find somebody in the portal who who fits into that lineup well. I'm I'm curious to see what we get out of Evan Bronze. I mean, he, he came yeah. to Iowa last year and... Just never saw much court time, um, and and so I I don't know if he just didn't develop the way that Coach McCaffrey was hoping that he would. But if he's back on that roster next year, maybe he's somebody that could uh, provide a few more minutes. Um, you know, down in the paint a little bit, um, possibly filling that role that Ben Cricky is leaving open now. I, I think you say that very well, Owen. Great stuff from you. I greatly appreciate both segments. You got our first show in with you. Long overdue. Look forward to having you back very soon. Safe travels to Albany. Go Hawks, as always, especially with Bluters Bunch. Uh, and again, after a tough loss in the, the uh, NIT for the Hawkeye men against Utah. But uh, we'll talk more Hawkeye basketball as Portal and, and NIL and everything comes through. So uh, anymore, Owen, it seems like it's 
whatever season we're in, don't worry because it's going to resurface at some point when that season ends. We're going to talk about it again another time, right? You got it, Dave. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate Greatly, it. Greatly, uh, truly, you, truly my pleasure. Thank you, Owen. There he is, folks. Owen Sebring, sports guy for Iowa's News Now, Fox 28, CBS 2. You see all Owen's information at the bottom of the screen. And again, I encourage you, go to those links, check out all the handiwork that Owen does if you missed it over the airwaves. Owen, thanks so much. So for Owen uh, Sebring, I'm Dave O'Hara with Hawkeye. We'll be back to close out the show and talk some Hawkeye football with the Gazette's John Steppy. Back with more in just a few moments. Who do you trust to produce the best deal? A seat company that's chasing technology or a seat company that's writing a book on it? Merchman Seeds is a leader in technology. We're independent and family owned. Our sister company, MS Technologies, provides access to world-class traits and genetics. And our starting line seed treatment is second to none. Who can you trust with your yields? Merchman Seeds, your friend in the field. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. There's our buddy John Steffi with the Gazette. You see all of John's information at the bottom of the screen along with mine throughout this program. Be sure to check out all the links connected to John. What great work he does. And first and foremost, as always, John, my friend, thanks for joining us. Doubling down now or backing up what we just covered in the last two segments with Owen Sebring from Fox uh, 28 and CBS 2. My goodness, we got the corridor covered here in media, but I really love the fact he went in-depth on Iowa Hawkeye women's basketball men's basketball now it's on you to talk about yesterday's uh kirk ferentz presser as we record this on wednesday afternoon march 27th so john two takeaways and i'm paraphrasing only kirk said basically kirk ferentz said about hayden proctor didn't mention his name specifically but said you know if he doesn't want to be here it's good that he's not here and secondly he was here for less than right about two months the day before spring drill started last wednesday he made his intentions clear last tuesday so let's pick it up from there and have you fill in the blanks of any other memorable moments. And thanks again for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Always a pleasure to be on. Thanks for having me on again. And with Caden Proctor, that was kind of the big storyline going into this press conference, the first press conference since Caden Proctor informed the team of his plans to leave. Of course, he can't officially enter the portal until next month, but that seems to be pretty much just a formality at this point. And as you referenced, Kurt Farron said that you don't want somebody on your team, again, paraphrasing, but you don't want somebody on your team who doesn't want to be here. And that was the key thing that he articulated there. Um, kind of ongoing with the challenges of the portal. He discussed those as well. Um, he did give credit to Swarm um, with that operation there and that is going to be a big thing for Iowa moving forward is how much can Swarm continue to fundraise when there's understandably some fans who maybe aren't the most thrilled after this. You know, they donated thinking, OK, getting Caden Proctor and then it's, oh, wait, maybe not. That was a good 59 days while it lasted. And as you said, day before spring practices as well. So that is kind of the big takeaway from things. So they're a little bit against the norm in terms of not having anybody right now in the portal. We'll see if that changes in the second portal window, which will happen next month, April 16th to April 30th. That question did come up with Kirk Ferentz, and he didn't rule it out, but it's also too early to really say anything. You have a couple question marks there that will determine whether Iowa is going to be able to replace so much. But when going back to Proctor specifically, so this offensive line is still in pretty good shape. You have the two tackles, Mason Richmond, Jennings Dunker. Kirk said in a question actually that I asked, like, okay, those guys, they're not moving those two inside. And then you've got a lot of options on the inside. Of course, Connor Colby has started the last few years. Logan Jones has started the last two years. You have that open spot that Rusty Feth had. Bo Stevens is right now the first teamer on the spring depth chart. But Kurt gave the reminder that, okay, the spring depth chart doesn't really mean a lot. A lot can change between now and September. So you could see maybe Tyler Ellsbury. Right now he's listed as the second team center. He's taking first team reps as Logan Jones recovers from an injury. So you could see him as a possible option as well. You could see Nick DeYoung, who's right now listed as second team right tackle. 
He can move back inside. He has experience there. So the offensive line's still in good shape despite Caden Proctor's departure, if you can even call it a departure when he hasn't done a single practice with the Hawkeyes. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that he even said as much, Kirk Ferentz. Normally you don't get that much when he said that Cade McNamara could Cade McNamara could and should be ready by June to go full speed. And they're they're tenuous at best to put him in because the guy doesn't know how to tamp it down. He goes, you know, 100% all the time. But any other commentary? I know you had written pretty well uh, on Tim Lester and some of the thoughts. I, I think Kirk talked a little bit about that. As usual, John, not a lot of details but at least talked about it. So let's go there for a moment with Tim Lester before we go to the defense and special teams, please. Yeah, Kirk said that things are look different with Tim Lester, but philosophically that he believes that they are in line with each other. So that could mean a lot of different things. (laughs) So I'll break that down a little bit. So we could be, we're probably seeing similar themes to what we've seen in past years in terms of, okay, this is not going to be a, you know, hurry up-tempo offense that's going to not really have any grasp of time of possession. Like, he wants to be able to have the defense, Kurt Ferentz has historically wanted to have the defense in a position to succeed. And you can make the argument that that did not happen with how, dysfunctional the offense was but when we're talking philosophically here you're talking about complementary football how well is the defense being set up for success Kurt Ferentz is a fan of running the ball I don't think we're going to see a crazy crazy number of passing plays every game so things will look different in terms of how specifically they do things but philosophically we're probably going to see the same general themes we're probably going to see a lot of tight end usage, especially when you look at this roster too. Blue Cliche coming back, Addison Ostringa. You've got tight end options. You don't have as much wide receiver depth. So you've got Caleb Brown and Seth Anderson as your first teamers, and it gets thin fast at that position in terms of players that really just haven't done a lot in games. So you're going to, it'll be interesting to see the first real test is going to be once we get to that open practice at the end of spring practices, that'll be the first chance to see, okay, what exactly does this look like? But right now it's still pretty early on in practices week two out of what basically runs a month. So even Iowa has not implemented all the things that we're going to see with the Tim Lester offense. So right now we're still on a little bit of a wait and see mode. All right, let's thank you for that. Let's move on to the defense and special teams. Some big holes to fill on both uh, special teams, kicking, punting, but also on the defense. As I mentioned, the aforementioned uh, Cooper DeGene, but Logan Lee, and and of course Tory Taylor. So let's talk about some of that development, if we could, please. Yeah. So Reese Dakin is to be the name to watch there at punter. He is another Australian, another one wearing the number nine. Why change got... it if it's not broke, right, John? Yes, exactly. So we asked Tori about it, and he didn't have any issues with the number nine <laughs> being used again. So I think it's going to be obviously some big shoes for Tori Taylor when you lose Tori Taylor um, for Reese now. But he could potentially be another outstanding punter. And it does help Iowa that Tory Taylor has had as much success when then they go back to pro kick and pro kick is not going to most likely they're not going to put their good punters in places where they're not set up to succeed. Iowa has shown the ability to set up punters for success. And because of that, Iowa probably benefited a lot from that and We'll see. So freshman year, Reese is probably not going to be the same as senior year, Tory. But I think Iowa could have another special punter on their hands. Time will tell on that. And then on defense, Cooper DeGene, obviously a significant departure there. The interesting thing, though, is other than that, there's a lot of returning pieces on this defense. I think it's eight starters off the top of my head who are first teamers on the spring depth chart. If you count the Leo and cash spots as separate, you'd have nine. So defensively, really a wealth of experience. 
this is the type of or the time of year really to give some of these other guys so a chance to see a few more reps. So that's what's happening so far. Oh, that's all. So much more to come, I'm sure. Thank you so much for joining us today and look forward to catching up with you in a couple of weeks because I'm sure there's going to be many more developments before the end of spring drills culminating, as you mentioned, on April 20th. So looking forward to that. John, thanks so much. Thanks. Always a pleasure. Truly my pleasure as well. For John Steffi and Ellen Sebring, to my production partner, Michael Merrick, and to you, the viewers, that's all from us at Hawkeye. Thanks to all of you. And as always, thanks for staying tuned at the end of the program for these rolling credits to give our advertisers and sponsors the attention and credit they so richly deserve. And as always, to our aforementioned guests and to you, the viewers. That's all from us at Hawkeye. Thanks to all of you.